What is a, we're rolling, what is a Trump called Ted Cruz now? Uh, I have just been informed he calls him beautiful Ted. And by the way, as a Cruz supporter, I was sickened by the Democrats attacking him and his wife in a restaurant. Uh, if I'd have been there, I, I hope I would have attacked them. It, it's just, I don't understand why the government is not protecting its own uh, elected officials. I, I mean, I, I, it, this is a mystery to me, why they don't get together and pass a law that elected officials can't be harassed like this. It's not freedom of speech to, to uh, uh, disturb the peace uh, yelling outside of somebody's house or to surround somebody in a public space. This is not, uh, uh, to me, legal. I think there have been times in American history when you were in, within your rights to hit those people or call the police and have them arrested. Well, did, didn't Maxine Waters, your, uh, your uh, uh, representative, didn't she say to get in their faces if there were restaurants? Wasn't that all over the media? Yeah, you're making my argument. Um, I've been trying to tell Rick all along here that Maxine Waters said ex uh, get in their faces. Um, uh, Eric Holder said when they're down, we kick them. Uh, he didn't correct it till the next day and said, oh, no, I didn't mean to be violent. Uh, Hillary Clinton said, you can't be civil when uh, other people want to uh, destroy what you're trying to do. Wait, are you filibustering on, you're rolling on this shit? I'm rolling. Come on, that's not fair. Um, there have been a, a series of... of uh, come on, come on, wait a second, that's bullshit. I'm... Anyway, because I'm about to give Lance a fucking victory here, because according to the articles I've read, no, the Democrats aren't fucking talking about the fucking caravan, so fine. But don't, don't fucking do the civility bullshit on me while I'm fucking researching. Come on. Yeah, you're proving my point right there. Why? Because I said You're right victory. about to hit me. Don't. Do he hit me. He hit. was off camera, but he yeah. struck me. All right. So fine, but yeah, the Democrats are not talking about the caravan. It's not a winning issue for them. All right. Do we want to talk about the citizenship question on the 2020 census? It's up to you. All right. Do you well, Lance right now was talking about how, um, you know, Cruz was accosted. And, and did, you want to, did you want to respond to that? I, I think it's, you know, when you represent the American people, um, if if people want to, I, I, if people want to yell at you, and if you're, uh, I'm okay with some of the yelling that's gone on. There you see the violence inherent in the system, as as Monty Python would say. There you go. All right, let's. let's He's a, he's a revolutionary. All right, let's. So Democrats are uncivil. And but there is there's other shit that goes on. The, the, and I don't. We can wade into the slaughter of eleven Jews, um, and the increase in race in um, in prejudice-based crime in the last two years. Or we can go on to other stuff, but um, and let's do that because eh, um, as a general issue that's been kind of underlined by our nearly two years of arguing, you know, Lance brings up Obama's deficiencies and I bring up Trump's deficiencies and it leads to the question can there ever really be a good president? Because um, if you look back, um, most of the presidents during our lifetime have been flawed, either as people or at, in, in their policies or in, in getting stuff enacted. Um, I mean, you just you go back president by president. Um, you know, Bush two. You know, got us into this war. You know, the Iraq War. 
um, Clinton, you know, with his busy penis and um, Bush won. You know, seemed like a decent guy with a lot of experience, uh, couldn't win a second term, raised taxes after he promised not to. Reagan had his deficiencies. Um, Carter certainly had his. You just keep going back and back and back. Um, I think the most popular president of our lifetimes, which are not short, we are old guys, was Kennedy. And one of the reasons that his popularity remained high is because he got killed a thousand days into his administration before people had time to really see that, you know, decide that he was suckier than, than, than they had time to when he got killed. Um, and then that leaves Eisenhower, who might be, uh, you know, the, the, the best president of recent times or the least controversially okay president. I haven't read any critiques of Eisenhower. He presided over a, except for the Cold War, which was miserable and could have killed tens of millions of Americans and, and Russians, uh, it was a, a fairly calm time in American history. Um, I don't know, is, who was, who's a universally, a president con, universally considered good, Lance? Um, to me, the, uh, the F Washington and Jefferson had the most successful presidencies, uh, Washington because he established what a president's powers were, um, that he wasn't going to be a king. And Jefferson, just because he kept doing great things, and people wonder whether it was just luck, but um, Jefferson increased the size of the United States with the Louisiana Purchase, making America double or triple, I don't know, at least double its size. Then he successfully defeated the Muslims, uh, who in our first foreign war. What, the Barbary pirates? Or? Correct. Yeah, our first, America's first foreign war was against the Muslims. And the, the funny thing about it is that Keith uh, Ellison, I believe, uh, the first Muslim American congressman, took his oath of office on, on, Jeff, on Jefferson's Koran. But the reason that Jefferson had a Koran was because he was trying to find out why the Barbary pirates kept attacking American citizens and turning them into slaves. And he kept trying to make deals with the, the Muslims, and they kept saying, well, we don't have to make deals with infidels because you're not believers, and so we're, we're allowed by our religion to make you into slaves. And that's why they had to have a war. Right, fine, so you got in a dig at the Muslims. But yeah, like, I'm but happy we to do but, it. But under your argument, but we haven't had, we may not have had a good president well, in Eisen, 200 years. Well, Eisenhower, I think, was an interesting choice on your part. I, I like that choice. Eisenhower, uh, recently we found out how Eisenhower won the Korean War. Uh, I This was released... By Freedom of Information, uh, uh, this there was a Freedom of Information release. A lot of people don't know this because it was not in the history books. But it was just released decades after the war was over. Um, Eisenhower won the Korean War, and here's a scoop for uh, Lance versus Rick because you're not going to hear this on CBS. He won the war by sending a secret communication to the Koreans, the North Koreans, that we were going to drop an, a hydrogen bomb or an atom bomb on Pyongyang, on their capital, and that if they didn't just, you know, give up and come to the table. So he was, and they knew because he was a general, that he meant it. Uh, you know, he what he did was he... he uh, analyzed the situation. He said, well, we've got this weapon. The Russians at that time either didn't have one, I can't recall, or they had some primitive thing, but 
He said, look, we're, we're, he threatened nuclear blackmail. Okay. So that was one hardcore motherfucker. He, the, what liberals love about Eisenhower, we, I mean, nobody knows much about Eisenhower. He liked to play golf. You know, he, he was heart attacky. Um, in his, one of his final speeches, he cautioned against the military industrial complex. He said, you know, look out for military contractors working with the companies that make stuff for the military, working with the military to constantly push us to be on a on push for more military spending and to constantly be kind of on a war footing. And this is a guy who, who knew war intimately. And he's the guy who said, look out for that. And, and, you know, the past 60 years have kind of borne out that that is a constant pressure. Um, I oh, wait, 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 well, I got more, one more okay, go fun historical tidbit. Was it about Eisenhower? No, it's about no, the... No, because the, I want to finish with Eisenhower. I have more about Eisenhower. Okay. Well, this is another thing that people don't know about Eisenhower. Um, during World War II, it was very important for the Germans not to know whether we were going to land our invasion force to free Europe at Calais or Normandy. The D-Day invasion. Yeah. And so what happened was Eisenhower approved a plan uh, to have our uh, have the French resistance get signal from us that we were going to land in Calais. And then... Calais? Calais. C-A-L-A-I-S. And that when, uh, when they got the information, <clears throat> we ratted them out. We got other people in Europe to rat them out to the Germans. So the Germans captured those resistance people and tortured them. And under torture, they said, all right, it's Calais. So the Germans believed it was Calais, but we landed at Normandy. They did. There's another thing they no, did. No, no, well, wait, wait, just let that sink in. So, so Eisenhower approved this. Eisenhower knew about this and, and said this is necessary for the war to have these people tortured to, into giving the Germans the wrong information on purpose. So you're talking about a very, very ruthless man. All right, go ahead. Uh, one more thing that didn't involve torture but involved a dead guy. Oh, that, yeah. They made a movie yeah, about this, yeah, I think. They, they took a dead soldier, American or, or allied, and had him wash up on the beach where the Germans would find him, and they had, he had papers on him that said, yeah, we were landing at Calais, right? Yeah. And so they, they, you know, the, guy was a, the dead guy was a hero after he died for being a... Anyway, um, just about the presidency. Uh, Washington and others at the beginning of, of the American nation didn't want the president to be a very important thing. Now we hear the name, the term president, and we think that's a very important thing. You know, and if you put a, you know, um, if you put the word president in the title of a, of a book or a movie, it's like, you know, the president is missing. It, it makes it sound like super like, you know, um, but the word president was chosen because it, it was, is a wimpy word. It's like hall monitor. It's a president is somebody who presides over stuff. Mm. It was designed to be a word that kind of didn't have a lot of punch to it. And it's only because the president, presidency has been a powerful office for the past 200 some years that it now carries some punch. But the founders of the, of the country didn't want people to didn't Washington especially didn't want the president to be a type of king. And that's why it's the second article in the Constitution. It's Article 2. Article 1 is the establishment of the Congress. All right. So, all right, next thing. Let's oh, do Wait, I have more to say about the presidents. And, and this is another first for Lance versus Rick. And I think I brought this up before, but I don't think Abraham Lincoln would be uh, would be considered a great president because he c prosecuted a war that cost 350,000 Union troops 
250,000 Confederates. But put it this way, uh, Bush Jr. is hated for prosecuting a war that cost, I don't know, five to 8,000 American lives. When we have 330 million people, Lincoln lost 350,000 men to free the slaves when the North only had a population of about, I think, 20 million. So uh, I don't think he'd be considered, uh, I don't think he'd get elected well, he in, was, he in was, modern America. He was pretty unpopular. Um, but well, even, he he, he, even, even if, even if, even if, yeah, it's true, he almost lost the election to McClellan, but not because of the loss of life, but because we were not winning. Yeah, he, he had a bunch of crap generals, and, and the war took, a war that they thought would be over in months took four years. Right, and he, he would not have won if Sherman hadn't taken uh, Savannah, I think. But the, uh, but the point is, is that uh, it, the loss of life was considered acceptable to Americans. I mean, it was obviously, you know, they weren't happy about it, but it was, they didn't hate him for that. And I, I don't think the modern Americans could stand for that loss of life. No. I'm going to cut here. All right, 75.3. First off, I have to apologize to the Russians, who I accused of giving me 1.2 million uh, bot followers on Twitter. Uh, I was contacted by a reporter, and uh, he wanted to talk to me because um, he sent me an article that I was... Uh, I was I'm top, I was top five in the world of people who lost bot-like followers when Twitter purged everybody. And it turns out that the 1.2 million that I suddenly got back were some of these bot followers that had somehow done something tricky to avoid being totally wiped out. And I got a bunch of maybe not entirely real followers back. But it wasn't the Russians trying to fuck up the election. It was... It, um, so, sorry, Russia. Um, now, Science Corner. Um, I just finished this book, Homo Deus, um, which is kind of a, it's a history of, of the dominant belief systems of humanity throughout history. And how, you know, back when, back before the monotheistic religions of Christianity and Islam you know, there was pantheism where uh, you know, we kind of believed in the divinity of everything, animals, people, you know, the sky, yada, yada. And that worked because that was pre-farming, pre-everything. And if we, we, if we were in competition with the animals to, to hunt them down, and to, we were hunter-gatherers. And so we believed, or you know, humans back then believed everything was kind of magic and holy and then that changed when we became farmers um, we had these religions like Christianity it says that God created man in his image and we're in charge of stuff and we were in charge of stuff as farmers you know that that gave us the right to to domesticate animals and, and kill the crap out of them you know we kill like 20 billion chickens in America every year. Um, and, and that would be an awkward thing if we believed the chickens were as divine as humans. Quick question though, Rick. Yeah. Did, how did Native Americans survive? Didn't they survive on buffalo? So would that make them kind of killers of animals too? I'm just curious. Well, yeah, I mean, but, yeah, but everybody killed animals, but Native Americans also revered the buffalo, right? Okay. Yeah, it's just it's just, um, it's just whether you're the boss of everything or not is the change from pantheism to monotheism. And then this guy argues that we're right now we're in the humanist era where we don't we believe in science and we don't believe in God as much, which works for us because you know that we're dominated by science, so we believe in science. But he says we're moving into the informationist era, where we are going to worship 
information processing and that this will eventually kick humans asses because the best information processors will eventually not be humans but will be AI and hybrids of um, humans plus you know Borg type deals or you know people with built-ins and all sorts of you know tweaked humans augmented humans um, and that regular humans are just going to get their asses kicked in the not too distant future and but I don't think I think this guy misses a point almost done so I'll go quick no I don't care it's your okay. show right, well that he says that AI soulless AIs might be better at, at processing information eventually and that that will kick consciousnesses ass humans with their consciousnesses and their feelings and all that stuff are going to get kicked their asses kicked by AI I believe that it's nearly impossible to have sophisticated information processing um, without consciousness that our computers just aren't sophisticated enough to really have consciousness yet though you have little hints of stuff going on in like a, in Google Translate and stuff and you know machine learning stuff it's not consciousness but it's it's pointing towards trends that might eventually establish consciousness in AI um, and this guy says yeah that, that smarter shit is going to kick humans butts this, almost the same way he argues that that you know the horses are great but the cars function as more efficiently as transportation so we don't use horses anymore so he's um, but I think that in the future we're going to have this information blob, this worldwide blob of information processing that will incorporate all sorts of consciousness that the only way to avoid the tragedy of humans getting their ass kicked, asses kicked by AI is, will be to incorporate all different forms of information processing based consciousness into this worldwide thought blob that will be able to, to bud off consciousnesses, be able to absorb consciousness. There will be a commerce in information processing which includes consciousness and that the, the consciousness will be like currency or there will be an economics of information processing that will um, absorb humans and other forms of, of thinking beings and be able to you know take a combine our thinking abilities into this cloud but also bud off individuals if you want to go off and be away from the, the, the thought blob you can do that but anyway uh, shit's gonna get weird all right do you know anything about the Bitcoin do I know anything about it very little Bitcoins? No. Oh, here's a here's a general topic. You got you and I have been arguing for nearly two years. Do we ever change anybody's mind? Yeah. Um, actually, this is a good question for the audience. So we're going to ask the audience now. Is there anybody out there whose mind has been changed by our arguing? Um, yeah. I I. I just recently, I got in an argument with someone on, I got in th arguments with three people on Facebook, three other artists, um, two of them called me uh, names, um, and one of them kicked me out of his group because I voted for Trump. No other reason. There were, I didn't do anything, I was polite. They just found out I voted for Trump and they attacked me. So I, I, um, I'm sorry that the Democrats have to do this. I wish that they were uh, able to handle 
the uh, election system that we have here. I, get, I don't think they're able to. I think that losing the uh, election is... is um, I don't think that Democrats that are extreme leftists today are accepting of democratic processes. I think that they all see themselves as revolutionaries. <clears throat> and if you believe that your opponent is Hitler, then you have to destroy him. I mean, uh, everybody wants to kill Hitler. And here, uh, this is what they do to Trump supporters. That's all I have to say. All right. Well, I think that the Democrats may be on the verge of winning an election finally. With eight days to go, um, Nate Silver, who's probably the best statistical modeler out there right now, says the Democrats have an 85% chance of taking back a majority control of the House. Not the Senate. The Senate, Democrats only have a 17% chance of taking back control. But, you know, if, if, if you if you don't think Trump is the very best president, um, it's cause for some limited optimism. Um, and 20 million people have already voted out of about 100 million people total who will vote in this election via early voting. So uh, this isn't the, the Hillary versus Trump. Um, you know, the, the, there's probably not going to be an October surprise, um, especially since it, it's, there's, we're not voting for a single president. Um, so this 85% this probability might get a little tighter, but it might largely hold up. And, you know, Democrats might control the House, which you probably don't like. Well, I heard two uh, interesting points about this. Um, they keep saying that the Democrats are going to control the House. And um, what I'm hearing is that there, if you do an overall poll, generic Democrat versus generic Republican, the Democrats will... Um, are like 8% ahead or 6% ahead. 8%. Okay. But when it comes down to individual races, you know, Bill Smith versus Kathy Jones, um, the Republicans aren't doing that badly. Now, I, frankly, I don't want to cause false optimism, but that's, that's an issue is that, you know, are we really knowing for sure about that? But um, the other thing... Well, no, you I can't heard, be for sure. That's a 15% chance that the Republicans win is not a negligible chance. Right. But there's also another issue, and that is if the House gets turned over to the Democrats, what is being discussed now is basically gridlock. In other words, there won't, it won't necessarily change much because... What it will do is it will prevent uh, certain types of things, but but it won't. Okay, put it this way: it'll cause gridlock. Yeah. But it won't allow the it won't allow the Democrats to enact their policies. No, but gridlock yep. is preferable to in in my mind to two more years of 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 effective Trumpism. Right. Right. That's the truth. And the thing that, that bothers me about all this is that um, I'm afraid we won't get a wall. That's my fear. Uh, if, Do you think there'll be an impeachment proceedings? Well, yeah. I mean, yeah, but, but that's just more obstruction. It doesn't. It won't mean anything because the Senate won't go along with we've, it. We've explained this a zillion times, but the deal is that Impeachment is a two-part process. The House can call for impeachment, but then, and this happened with Clinton because of his busy penis, um, or his lying about getting BJ's in the Oval Office, basically. Um, 
And so he was impeached, but that just meant that he went on trial in the Senate. So and, what would Trump be impeached for? I mean, they'll have the penis. Well, I mean, we're after economy, after or? the election. People are expecting a bunch more stuff to come out come from Mueller. So they're looking for something, as opposed to there being something. Is that what you're saying? Well, I mean, twenty three people um, have been indicted so far for election stuff, and so yeah, they're Related looking. to Trump. Yeah, people. Uh, well, Russians plus. Trump staffers and stuff. No, like, uh, Rick, come on. You're conflating so many different things. Well, no, things hold on. All right, there. well, 19 Russians and like four Trump staffers. But been... they had nothing to do with one another. And they, they weren't for Russian collusion at all. The, the, impe- the, the Mueller investigation is trying to find collusion between Trump and Russia. And they haven't found that at all. The, the Russians were indicted for... Um, Spreading rumors on the internet that favor. Uh, okay, well, let's hold on because we got to move on. But let's let me just let me grant this Why to you. you having... Let me grant it okay. that that maybe nothing, maybe Trump, maybe nothing happens with Trump and collusion with Russia. On the other hand, maybe uh, there's stuff with obstruction of justice. Like what? Like Trump says, tries to intimidate people or says, makes false statements. When? Oh, there was some stuff on Air Force One where no, he, there wasn't. Yeah, uh, like he, he he makes up a story for Don Jr. to tell about what the meeting with the Russians was about. No, actually, uh, there is no story of of any kind like that. Don Jr. announced uh, what happened uh, within two days of the meeting. And Trump simply agreed with what Don Jr. said. There is no story. The, the, every, the, so there is no, there is no collusion between Russia and Trump. Didn't Hillary have a, a meeting, get up to say, obtain something for the Russians? Like a I dossier don't know. or something like that, would that be considered? Let's, we're not going to fucking yell about the dossier again. Well, but anyway, there, so anyway, there, there may be... Is anybody looking at that? I'm curious. I'm just asking. Mueller isn't. No. So, uh, I mean, and that's the only collusion we found with Russia. All right, so the deal, there may be shit that comes out after the election. Now is the quiet time where Mueller lies a little bit low to not fuck up the, ele- the election. Afterwards, he may come out with some stuff. The, the Democrats will certainly reopen hearings into various aspects of the election of 2016, which may lead to impeachment. But just because the president gets impeached doesn't mean he gets kicked out of office. It just means that the Senate holds a trial. But would you agree that there's a lot of good things happening right now in society because of Trump? And that's going to be impeded because they're trying to find something to... I mean, well, Lance would. I would say there's, a, there's some... Uh, well, happen. here's what I've been saying on Twitter. Um, that it's, you got your tax cut, Republicans and corporations and rich people. Um, but do you really want like a guy who doesn't understand a lot of economics you know, running stuff for another two years and, and you know, doing, getting into trade wars and, and doing tariff stuff? How bad is the economy doing right now that you said he doesn't... Oh, oh you don't get to go... You, you probably don't get to take Carol to a Star Wars movie. You're right. It only hit 3.5 percent. You needed uh, you needed the trifecta of four quarters with four percent. I think it had to go over three each time. I thought it was four. I think it's four. Now three and a half percent. I got to admit that's still a nice growth rate, but it does but it doesn't let you take Carol to the drive. Well, I'll tell you something. I'm gonna since we're in a confessional stage today. Um, I don't think. Trump hit 3% his first year in office. I looked that up, and I think he, he started to do real well, but, but I don't think he quite made it to 3. Yeah. But he, he'll, he'll undoubtedly make it to 3 this time, or an over 3. Probably. Yeah. Unless there's a you know, disaster in the last three mm-hmm. months of the so, year. The economy has been good. Employment statistics are, are at historically good levels. Um, the stock market has been taking a big dump lately, though. The, it's, it's been down 
13 out of the past 16 days. But it keeps going back up, doesn't it? Well, right now, it's, it's one of the major indices, it might be the S&P, is in correction territory. It's dropped more than 10%. It might be the NASDAQ, um, which is not the best thing to happen eight days before an election. Um, in terms of the mood of the country, uh, no, the country is pissier now than it has been, I don't know, since 1968 when we were pissy about, you know, the hippies versus the straights. I, I actually think it's worse than, this, than, the, than the revolutionary 60s, and I'll tell you why. Because during the 60s, there was a lot of protesting and a lot of violence, but it was only from a minority. The, the, what Nixon called the moral majority, if you were alive silent back then, majority. the silent majority, was real. He was right about that. He was no fool. Um, 70 or 80 percent of the country was as conservative as me, maybe more so. Uh, it was only a very vocal minority of hippies. and yeah, People don't and, realize that because yeah. when they show movies about the 60s and 70s, it's all hippies. But it was more people looked like they worked for NASA with horn-rimmed glasses and, and you know white short sleeve sh button down shirts and ties and, 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 and crew cuts and, in in boulder yeah. i remember when i was a kid they would they put up billboards telling hippies to take a bath and get a job um it was it was things were anyway our director is saying we're not yelling at well, each no, other no wait enough. i want to make a point though um and this is very significant i may not be yelling but it's, it's important because a lot of people are predicting civil war. And I'll tell you what makes me nervous. What makes me nervous is that the Democrats have been able to whip up half the country, not just a minority of hippies. What I was trying to say was, in the 60s, when we thought we were going to have a civil war, it was, the country was 80% old-fashioned conservative with, a, with a, a, a loud minority of hippies. Today, half the country are hippies or, you know, revolutionaries. Half the country is part of the resistance. They call themselves the resistance. Like, I, sometimes I don't see a Democrat for a few months and I ask them, did you run off and join the resistance? Uh, and they're proud to say they have. And I'm telling you, those people will shoot me. There, there are people on, on Facebook I'm talking to that will be happy to shoot me if they think it'll, it'll defeat the forces of Trump, the Nazis. Uh, so No, I, I, dis, I call bullshit on that to a certain extent where you were talking, you just were talking about how America... Wait, I want to say something. You're not keeping your arm away from your body and I can't take it anymore. All right, all I right, keep all right, grabbing all right. you. And they think I'm, you know, I'm, I'm becoming transgender here. So stop that. All right, all right. But the, mm -hmm. but America put up with losing a huge percentage of its men during the Civil War. Right. But back then, the average lifespan was like forty. Life was cheap. People died of shit all the time. Now the average lifespan is over eighty, and. When you talk about civil war, people are not going to be shooting them each other to any great degree. What you'll get is people like throwing mashed potatoes at each other this Thanksgiving. <laughs> that's not a civil war. That's just a pissy dinner. I okay. First of all, there's a fallacy about life expectancy. I know it, it's it's oh, it's it's child mortality that really. Right. If you made it past the age of five, your life expectancy was within 10 or 15 years of the way it is today. But still, people died like frickin' crazy. Yeah, they were used to death, but but I know I agree. I mean, I cannot imagine people that will sue if you make a joke they don't like actually sticking their neck out, you know, to be shot by a Republican. I I agree. The you know, uh, I I can't imagine snowflakes uh, fighting it out. Also, but, but I have to tell you, they would like to. I think the snowflakes would like very much. I see, I see Antifa. Uh, they're practicing their, their uh, marksmanship, and they're all getting martial arts training. How many people are really freaking Antifa? Well, it, 
it, it's not the number, it's an indicator of, uh, it's, it's the fringe of an overall large number of people that are in that direction. In other words, it, it's true that it's the, it's the extreme end of violent Democrats, but there are, uh, I can tell you that if I wanted to, all right, and I'm saying this in all honesty, I could get in a fist fight every week. I could. And yeah, I'll, no. I'll tell you how I would do it. I could go, I could walk down the street in this neighborhood wearing a Make, okay. Make America Great Again hat and just sit down in any bar. And if someone comes up to me and grabs my hat or spits on me and I say, fuck you, and I spit back, I could be in a fight. And, and, I, and, and fights in California and sometimes with gunshots because people are packing. What? So, no, I mean, that's, how, that's why people get shot. They start fighting and then someone goes out to their car and gets their gun. But let's, let's talk about fighting in L.A. because I'm I've, I've, working in bars. I've seen a lot of fights. Um, I know. It's, just, it's, it's not as dramatic as on James Bond movies. But what I'm saying it's slap is fighting. It's, if, it's, it's, if, it's, you <laughs> want, if you want violence, you can have it today. Whereas you could not get, 20 years ago, a George Bush senior per person yeah. fighting with a Perot right. person. But Do you remember? All right, there were three candidates, Clinton, Perot, and George Bush senior. No one was fighting over anything. No, there was nothing. To, there wasn't and who was no. responsible for that? Is it, the, is it Trump and his fiery speeches? Well, the, the, the liberals say that, that Trump and his... his is to some extent responsible for when lunatics like send 14 pipe bombs or slaughter 11 Jews. The, 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 the timber, the temper, the, the nature of, of Trump's kind of statements have, have made for a more rancorous and possibly... Wasn't he the one that said, uh, punch somebody and I'll take care of your... Own? Legal expenses, yeah. That doesn't help, does it? Yeah. And well, then, that, that's because he had hecklers in yeah. his audience and that then, should have been escorted out. They had people that were trying to drown out his speech. I mean, that's not normal behavior. A candidate shouldn't have to put up with that. You know, well, not to put words in Lance's mouth, but conservatives say there have always been lunatics and that you can't hold the president responsible for the actions of individual lunatics. Yeah, but doesn't Trump say he's a nationalist now? Doesn't that have well, like national, power? What Trump's... Nationalism is an ugly word because it, it's been used in ugly ways during the 20th century. I would say that Trump doesn't exactly understand the full implication of nationalism. So you're defending Trump on this one? Not, well, no, I'm just saying that he's, he's sloppy with words, and when he says nationalism, is he using it as a, as a dog whistle to racists? I don't know. I think he means it more that, um, that America above all. Well, good. So you're a reasonable person. Of course that's what he means. But listen, this is my argument. And I, I, I guess I didn't emphasize it enough. I want you to think about this. As I've said many times, every week since Trump's been elected, I've been called a Nazi. And uh, Trump and every Republican I, uh, that's in, in office has been called a Nazi. Now, I don't know about you, Guy, but, but when, when there are Nazis, your only alternative is to kill them or beat them up. And... I think the Democrats started this by insisting that all Republicans are Nazis. I hear it every day. Don't try to deny it. And if you're, if you're going to do that, then you're dehumanizing your opponent and you have to shoot them. You have to. So that's where all this started. If, if Democrats, like I hear you, and I'm not, I, I'm not trying to be mean to you, but very often you'll say, oh, someone's a racist, or that organization are racist, and this and that. And it's like... You hear no. that more often than I actually say. No, you said it last week about uh, the Proud Boys. And oh, it's yeah, like, all right, those guys. Yeah, but my point is, is that nobody out there are Nazis. I've never met a Nazi. 
Well, and, all right, and, so and yet, whatever yet, they are, they, they kick the shit out of some gay guy because... No, what happened was, as I, I know said it before, was they were attacked by Antifa and they fought back, and your media convinced you that it was Nazis beating up homosexuals. And what I'm trying to tell you is, yeah, as long as your media calls everyone a Nazi, then we're going to have war. We're going to have conflict. I don't know where it'll go. I mean, I don't know if it'll be... They'll be machine gunning people down in, in, in torrents. But you've got to stop calling people Nazis just because you disagree with them, Rick. And I mean, and it's not just you. I Have you met a lot of Nazis in L.A.? Yeah. When, when did you meet a very, Nazi? They're, they're very frustrating. When I worked at a big old biker bar, uh -huh. guys would walk in with Nazi tattoos. Did they even know what that meant? No, I don't think so. And it's like they'd walk in with the 88, which eight is, H is the eighth letter of the alphabet. So if you have an 88 tattoo, it means Heil Hitler. Um, they had SS tattoos. Well, you know why? Because in prison, the only way to for a white guy to protect himself is to join a uh, Aryan nation. Aryan brother. All right. So yeah. But, so that's, some of them you'd even prison. see. You'd wait, even wait, see. wait, wait, wait. Just let, let that. No, sink let in me. Let bit. me. Let me finish. All right. And I'd, you'd see the occasional swastika, and I look about as Jewy as you can look. I look like yeah. a, a rabbi, and these guys were perfectly courteous to me. There was no fuck you Jew. Or anything, and it's like it just weirded me out that these guys would have Nazi tattoos mm -hmm. and not take the opportunity to be discourteous to an obvious Jew. It's like, wait, you're going to be anti-Semitic, yet here's a super duper Semite right in front of you, and you're not going to, you're going to be nice, and you're courteous, and shit. It was just, it was weird. It's like. It, it's, it, I, I have a feeling that most anti-Semites, um, and you have a more reasonable explanation as to why they, they have these tattoos. Maybe. They prob I'm, in addition to having to join the Aryan nation to survive in prison, they probably also acquired Aryan nation prejudices. But um, most people who are anti-Semites, there aren't that many Jewish people in the world like what, 15 million? Mm -hmm. Like 1% of the number of, of Christians or Muslims. And most anti-Semites don't even know more than zero or one or two Jews. Well, but how does this address my question? I'm trying to tell you that the Democrats keep calling everyone they disagree with Nazis. and But you asked, do I know any Nazis? And I've met a bunch of... Yeah, of but that doesn't really, that's sort of beside the point. I'm saying that, that there, there are half the country voted for Trump, minus three million probably illegal aliens that were voting. Oh, no. And, and I would say that half of the country are not Nazis. But according to the Democrats I talk with, I deal with, yes, they are. They're all Nazis. Well, if, you know, if you're still supporting Trump after the past... 20 months of President Trump. Mm -hmm. um, now, I know I have close friends and relatives who um, support Trump for economic reasons, for policy reasons. Do you know anybody that voted for Trump so that they could uh, get rid of all the blacks and Mexicans and Jews? Not personally, but I think there are a couple tens of millions of Trump supporters who um, kind of tend in that direction. No, but but I mean, it doesn't make any sense, Rick. What do we? How could we? Possibly... Not to get rid of the blacks and the Jews, but well, what are we going to do to them? What are our? I'm a Trump supporter. What am I going to do to the blacks and the Jews and the Mexicans? What am I going to do to them? Well, you're going to keep the Mexicans out, and you're going to kick well, out the Mexican Mexicans Americans? who are here. I'm going to, to Mexican Americans? Have I ever said that in my life? I didn't life? say Mexican Americans. I said Mexicans. Yeah, I, I mean, illegals. I don't care what country they're from. Yeah, but mostly Mexicans. Well, but they're not. They're mostly from Asia these days. I mean, a lot of them are from Mexico. We accept 70%. Of all immigrants that are accepted to the United States, when you come picture, from Mexico. And, Wait, don't talk over me. 
70 we're per- yelling now. 70 percent of all people given american citizenship come from one country mexico that's not fair why can't some of them come from brazil or the philippines or scotland or norway or russia why is it all 70 percent from mexico that's that's not diversity i'm for diversity first of all secondly I would not expel one single Mexican-American. We're not talking about Mexican-Americans. Well, then why do you think that Republi- that Trump supporters are Nazis? What are they going to do? Who are they going to hurt? What, what, what policy are they going to institute to harm blacks or Jews or Mexicans? It, it looks to me like... We're going to kick out all the Mexicans. I'm talking about American citizens. What is Trump I, doing to harm blacks, Mexicans, and Jews? Well, American Mexicans. There is there are some uh, instances, dozens of instances of uh, Mexican Americans being denied passports and all that. It, it's, well, that's it's a, obviously just a mistake. Mm. I mean, that's not Trump's policy. Yeah, when 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 some Dodger pitcher manages to to get caught on the border, we should not let him back in. You know, or 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 when or when when your local accountant that happens to be a Mexican American takes a takes a trip over to Canada, we shouldn't let him back in. You think that's Trump's policy? No. All right. Let's go on to some other stuff so we can maybe. Yeah. All right. So, do we want to talk about Apu Nahasa Patapitalan? If on you Simpsons? go right ahead. All right. So Apu, I guess somebody just told us today that Apu got kicked off the Simpsons because he's a. Um, Set it up. Explain to people who he Apu is, because I didn't is, know who he was. Apu is, has for 30 years been the owner of Quickie Mart, a convenience store on The Simpsons. And uh, Apu is from India. And um, people got pissed at, eventually and said, you know, Apu's just like this unfortunate stereotype and he's got to go. And he went. Um, so also in... in um, uh, this is the week that Megyn Kelly got kicked off of NBC for saying that um, blackface shouldn't be that big a deal on Halloween costumes. Um, and so what do you think of your fellow Democrats doing this to people? You know, I think if, a, if an ethnic group gets pissed off, it can make the case that, that, that this isn't something we do anymore, that... It's it's you know it's reasonable to uh, take corrective action. So you think we should get rid of Apu and that Megan Kelly should have been fired? This is so sad, Rick. No, wait, you, I don't. No, I, I haven't. Wait, I haven't. You were doing so well. I'm okay with saying goodbye to Apu. Actually, I haven't watched The Simpsons in about six years. Um, it's a great show. But they've been on for 30 years. Um, and, I, and if you want to watch Apu, there are 500 episodes that he's in. So. so you're okay with getting rid of Apu because we can't make jokes anymore about people from India. You can make jokes. There's a new show called I Feel Bad. No, 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 no. Now look, no, no, Rick, hold on. I got to answer this question. One, hey, you know what? I don't care. You can't fire me. I don't think there's anything wrong with wearing blackface on Halloween. I don't think it's wrong for, for black people to put pink face on on Halloween. But I don't pink think it's, face isn't a thing. I don't think it's wrong for, for, for people to put makeup on themselves on Halloween. I don't care if they want to wear Hitler costumes on Halloween. I don't care right. if they want to dress as I rabbis. Care if- I don't care because I can take a joke. I think it's okay to have Apu making uh, somewhat sweet, funny jokes about people that are Im- immigrants from India. It's okay. It's all right. I can handle it. And I, I'm not giving in to the insanity. I'm not giving in to the insanity. You want to fire me or report me or come here and try to fight me? It's I don't care. I am not going to give in. Rick has... has has already loves Big Brother. Rick Rick is now part of Big Brother, and and he's accepting it. I'm not. 
Read my tweets. My tweets are as, as, as offensive as they come. I, I, I haven't given in it. But the, the idea, you talked about pink face. Can you get and, in the post, please? Yeah. Um, pink, the, simply, I mean, pink face isn't a thing. Then make it a thing. If that's, but, but if that's something that, that you're black so concerned face about. Blackface the, the, is the, the dominant demographic dressing up in a de, to demean a minority. And if the minority says, no, that indicates that we find that oppressive or intimidating or that it puts us, that you're making fun of us or presenting us as inferior and, and we, we don't, and, or given the, the, the history of blackface and its association with racism. Given all that, it, 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 it shouldn't be done. And I you know, buy that argument. You know what? It proves, it proves that there is no racism in America because if you can't even be Megyn Kelly and, and say, make a statement like that without having your career ruined, then how much tr racism really is there in America? I bet you I mean, why, well. why isn't racism... Why doesn't this prove that, that racism is, is pretty much gone? Because you can't, you can't even say... Little, she didn't even dress in blackface. She just said she thought it could be allowed for Halloween. And yeah. she loses her job. Oh, I bet you. So, so is there a lot of racism over there at ABC or where NBC, yeah, wherever she is? NBC. Yeah. But I, I is bet there you, a lot of racism? I bet down you they there? focus grouped her, and she wasn't testing as well as well, they hoped. That's probably true. But then, then that's the problem, isn't it? If if you can credibly make a make an argument that someone's career should be ruined because they made an innocuous statement like that, then how much racism is there? Are, are blacks being uh, oppressed? Are people running around in the street wearing blackface? Apparently not. Apparently you can't even joke about it. You can't even do it on Halloween. A little child can't even do it. So how well, much racism is there? Why are you there? putting shoe polish on a little child? What the, what's the deal? Rick. Uh, Rick, I, doesn't this prove that racism is pretty much dead in the United States? No, uh-uh. If, if you can get... No, the number of racial... Ins the number of hate crimes has gone up uh, significantly in the past two years. You know, a lot of that hate crime is because millions of Muslims have been allowed into the country and they attack Jews. Did you know that? No, um, I'll tell you about yeah, the, the time. Yeah, the media that, doesn't tell you that, does I'll it? I'll tell you about the time that I accidentally went as a member of the KKK for Halloween. I think that's funny. Well, what happened was I decided, I was in like second grade, <laughs> and I was going to wear a dunce cap because dunce caps are funny. They're shaped like, you know, white cones. But I decided that I was such a dunce or don't. So I, I decided to make a super duper dunce cap, a dunce cap that was so big that it would fit all the way over my head and go down to my shoulders. And then I cut eye holes in the dunce cap <laughs> and I went on the Halloween parade wearing a giant white cone over my head. Oh. I'd never heard of the KKK, but in retrospect, I was dressed as if I was in the Klan. Did anyone say anything? No. How old were you? I was like seven. Nah, you know what? You're never going to be on the Supreme Court now. Oh, dang it. All right, what else we got? We got four minutes. Oh, we were. Lance and I have been hanging out for the past like 14 hours because I, I modeled for his art class this morning. Um, and we've decided... Each of us has been the beneficiary in our sexual histories of, of horny girls, women who are horny. Lance more than me, because Lance has been single longer than me. Well, I would just like to say that when you're repulsive, the only women you go to bed with are women that are extremely horny. Did you, did you get that? Because if they've got any kind of standards at all, if they can control themselves, they say no to you. It's, I, it's, that's the funny thing. Ironically, guys that are repulsive, they get the skewed view because the only women that are with them are desperate women. That's, yeah, I used to get excited 
to, I'd kiss a girl or I'd be talking to her, I could smell her breath, and if her breath smelled like booze and cigarettes, I'd be like, oh, this girl doesn't respect herself at all. Maybe she'll have sex with me. Yeah, but it, it's true and because, because if a woman jumps right, in, right into bed with you and you're not that attractive, it means, hey, you know, like, it, it means any port in a storm is what yeah. she's thinking. But what we decided is that given the current climate of Me Too, that we think we would, I would, I asked Lance if he thought that this had diminished the instance of, of horny girls. Well, horny women and Lance. <laughs> horny women, yeah, yeah. <laughs> all right, so listen, here's what's really happening, briefly. They've done all kinds of studies, uh, and I, I can't point to one right now in the, at my fingertips, but yes, the, the feminists and the lesbians and God knows who else, leftists, are trying to keep men and women from enjoying each other and being together, and so the younger generation is getting a lot less sex. Uh, they are, the boys are afraid of the girls. Um, they're afraid to talk to them. They're afraid to touch them. They're afraid to make a pass. And women, naturally, they don't, you know, they're, they're not impelled by testosterone to push things forward. They're naturally sort of uh, less easy to get excited, so they're waiting for for the male testosterone to sort of push the the situation forward. And what's happening is the young men aren't doing it. They're afraid. They think they're going to get sued or something. But there's another way of looking at it. In the, the 70s, were a more an almost coercive sex positive time. People thought you were a weirdo if you weren't super horny. And we're out of time. Thanks. Subscribe to this thing. If you want to have more sex, vote Republican. Well, no. Though there is a dating service for, for Trumpers because uh, they're having a hard time finding dates among the general